Guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Cardiff City World. We are here for another video, seven days a week, Cardiff City content, and it's uh, by the fans, for the fans. Today, we are debating Errol Bullet and his first season at Cardiff City. This is Robert. This is Matthew. I think I said I'm Sai, but let's get going. Errol Bullet has had his uh, first season at Cardiff. As we record this, we're not sure if he's staying or he's going. It's going to be interesting. But I think, I think overall he's done well but i can also see why people some people are a bit fed up with the style of football and this and that and that but i also think the grass is not always greener and we haven't had a manager since probably neil warnock at least who's managed to get anything out of a lot of these players uh robert what do you think um i think it's pretty obvious mate if if we don't get yeah, bullet signed down then um who the hell knows what's gonna happen come next season because look he's obviously he's not brought in hell of a lot of players currently but you can guarantee if he goes Sierra's got Timmy's got amongst others we're gonna go um I just think it's silly if you don't pull a trigger on uh, get him a new card. He was just another year. I don't think Bullock would accept another year. I think he'd probably want at least two, three year contract. Not that that means anything these days, managerial wise. Um, but you would give it to him? Oh, a million percent, mate. A million percent. Because what, what the hell are you going to take it instead? Mm. What are we going to have instead? Um, he's brought us forward. I know you're on tight schedule now. Ram along, but um, he, you know, we're on tight schedule with, uh, with the manager as well, so yeah, I, I think that he's a must stay, mate. And it'd be silly not to uh, to keep to renew him. Um, Matt, as, as a match going fan, <laughs> <Dick Ed. laughs> yeah. no, like, as someone who's obviously you've seen the majority of the games, yeah, like, do you understand why they're the, the yeah, I can see the with... frustrations, um, you know. Is it purely the style? I think so. I think, you know, at home, we kind of play as if we start up as if we're playing away from home. Yeah. Um, we haven't had that freedom. And it's frustrating because element, there's been times during games where we have shown glimpses, but we haven't done it consistently enough for me. Um, and the Cardiff City fans, as most fans are at home games, I think, are, are passionate and Cardiff fans are and they're not afraid to voice their concerns as well if things are not going as they should as they see it then um, for me I think he's deserved another crack I just want to see that stability um, and I think you know we've got players there on loan coming towards the end of contracts I think that's massively important this consistency shown off the field back in the manager because I think it has an impact on those in the changing room yeah and this, look like you say there's players that are going to go this back to their clubs whatever there's players who, who need to go for a variety of reasons and with the greatest of respect if you're going to rebuild the team and a club in our case you've got to give the manager time to get his own players in i saw a stat the other day like Jurgen klopp has been a little for eight years he's obviously going this summer and he's only this season where he's had his squad, his 25-man squad, is just players that he has signed or brought through the academy. Before that, in the seven years previous, it's always been at least the one player yeah. who's left over from the previous regime. And I think you've got to allow him time. Well, you always be last in the playoffs. That's the last time we won 11 home games. That's right? Gone. If we win tomorrow, sure. when this when we're recording this, before the um, Borough game. Before you know, the so. Borough game. If we win at Borough, uh, win at home against Borough, that's 11 home games we won. The last time we done that was when we was in the playoffs. Really? And there you go. I think that's, that's a, a like, And this is what I think people forget, right? Is, all right, you can say the football at home particularly is not what you want to see. But I also think at the start of the season, the football at home was pretty good. Like, we were pressing. We were knocking the ball about quick. We had purpose. I used that word purpose a lot when I've been doing the different reviews. Like passing with purpose is massive if you're playing possession football. 
and we did have a period you can't ignore it where we've just gone sideways sideways backwards and that was probably because certain players were out your ramsey's and and rolls was out and and everything and mcginnis then as well like big part of this big chunk of the middle of your team like your spine who were vital to the way you play and i think he's had to mix and match a bit as he stuck with certain players too much yeah probably i think he picked ryan wintle when wintle's form dipped but then on the other end of that you can say well he was loyal he knows what he can get out of him and he stuck with him when he dipped you know bowler i think everyone agrees there's been points when he should have been dropped but he's also created a couple of magic moments it's yeah. like there's I, I a thin he, line between loyalty yeah, and absolutely. yeah i think uh, he's got a lot to learn is his first year first season in um england although he's in you know what i mean yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, the, in the british in league the efl um, so I think he's got a lot of learn, a lot of reflecting to do. Um, but hopefully, you know, the last couple of games where we put in decent performances, he can take things from, and hopefully he can take our forward into next year. Fingers crossed. Mm. Um, question I wanted to ask you then is: um, Always wants <laughs> want something. Do you think the standard of the championships always been renowned for being the most difficult league, without shadow of a doubt, for me? Mm. Do you think the standard of football in the championship now is a lot stronger than it was maybe I don't know, five years ago? Oh, 100%. I mean, it gets stronger every single year, mate. I think. Yeah. Um, sorry to jump inside. No, go on, it, crack on. it gets stronger every single season, mate. The the pro I think the thing is like I think a few people um have said already, guess you've had in your show, mate. Championship is not a second tier level of football anymore it is a second premiership league well, i think um, it's in the top six leagues in for europe isn't it the, the standard is so high mate i think you know i think pound for pound you look at 12 10 teams in our league and they would compete very very highly in a french german uh italian league with no disrespect obviously to those guys but the the, the Pound for pound, mate, it's such an intense league. And you can even go as far as League One. League One is like a second championship yeah. now. Yeah, uh, it's the, unbelievable. Some of the size of the teams in there. It's, it's wild. The size, mate. The standard of football is so high. It's not like you're like and it was when I, when I used to watch the last time I watched football like 20, mm. 30 years ago, wherever yeah. it was. It's and so the thing high. is, mate, as well, it's like it's like if teams come down to, to the championship from the Premier League now, they get relegated. They do, they need that parachute payments to have any chance of going back straight back up because the standard is so high. But it's yeah. the same if when a team's go down to League One, it's no guarantee you're coming straight back Absolutely up, not. no matter who you Absolutely are. Not, and that's why it's been so important that Cardiff are not involved in another relegation battle this year because yeah. I think if we go down, we we'd have problems coming back up. Rex would go up before we did. And and that's why it's been so important to have that stability this year. So let's play a bit of devil's advocate. If Mr. Tan decides that Errol Bullard's not for him. So a reality then. Who is a realistic option? So there's been rumours that the owner likes Morrison. He wants Morrison back, which makes no sense to me. Like, well, why would you sack him if you want like him? But there's him. I think he's probably the most obvious choice. I don't, I, that doesn't do it for me. I've got to be honest. Um, and then you're like, you're looking at people which are just unrealistic. Like people will say, Steve Cooper, Steve Cooper, one, wages too high for him. Two, Alan Tate is number two. He takes him everywhere. He ain't coming to Cardiff and Cardiff ain't having him it's in any it. way, shape or form. And he, he won't work with a budget. So that's him out the window. So then you've got to look at either young young candidates who've never had a job, maybe like a Bellamy, or some people were saying Ramsey the other day, like when I was on the phone and I was like, that's ridiculous. It's crazy, it's mate. A um, stupid idea. I can understand having him as a like a player coach. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, but a player and, But I think he's doing that anyway, isn't he? Yeah, 100%. Without shadow, without shadow, without. Um, you know, I think, the ship of sail for Nathan Jones. Yeah, he hasn't done that well. He's got a career now. No, 
I think going back a couple of but uh, one thing I sorry ago, mate, uh, one thing I will say about Nathan Jones is if Nathan Jones can, can, would come in, one thing he would do is he would unite the fan base yeah. because having one year old or like a genuine Cardiff City fan as the manager, I think can be a focal point to rebuild the relationship between the fans and the club. A bit like Joe Ledley was talking about on Thursday when he came on the Roger Gig show, like the big part of the 2016 squad was rebuilding the connection with the fans. And I think that there is something to be said for that, but I do agree with you that I think he needs to probably rebuild his reputation or his career a little bit. He's not quite where he was when he was at Luton and he was doing amazing things on a budget. Um, what about Bellamy? Like I mentioned him then, do you think? Under the under the regime that we've got in the boardroom now, I don't think he'd come back. No way. Until um, you just can't imagine it. Like I don't know him personally and stuff like that, but like the things I've heard is that he was not happy that they didn't support him when he had that complaint against him. Nothing seems to have really come of it. So maybe he had, you know, he seems like he was probably right to yeah. say, "Why didn't you back him?" If he wants to come on a show or with his side, yeah, absolutely, yeah, more, than get touch, more than welcome. Um, I've met Craig once in the show before previously. And he's he's a lovely guy. He's um, everyone I speak to says he's he's, awesome. he's such a like I, I um, he's a fire cross. Sorry to go off topic, but like we just Again. had um, my boy and, um, <laughs> for his, like when he was newborn, we bought a um, car seat kit like for a newborn or whatever. I got talking to him and he signed and all that. And a lovely conversation with him. He's a lovely guy. He's a very angry man, but he's a lovely, lovely guy. Aren't we and, all um, though? We are. Like Jeremy, we go with it, Matthew Angel. We're always angry. So but, um, um, but like like Ian said, like he, he ain't coming when he lost that. But, if there was any way to get him, him, I think he'd be a very good choice. But see my thing with him, right, is again there's no point in getting him if you're going to sack him after a year if things go tits up if you're going to get someone like say say just for instance right craig bannamy's the choice he's your man in my opinion you've got to give him five years to build yeah. and say do what you're what you think will make this team and club successful do it could you see him going down the road of they'll never do it they would never do that like a graham potter frank lampard wayne rooney do you think they'd have to I can see a Vincent wait. Han doing it. Yeah. Because he doesn't learn I don't lessons. think I I personally wouldn't think that those type of people would look at it. Do you know unless what do you know I take is, over all of those people you just mentioned? I would take Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer. Oh shut up. No, no, right. And I there's a reason why, right? Is when Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer was at Cardiff, right? I cut the he, was, he was shit. And I, I accept he was shit for us. However, I would argue that he now is a different person, manager, coach than he was then. He's learned a lot. And if you're going to tell me Wayne Rooney or all these people, I would rather have him back. So I'm not saying I want him. I'm saying I would rather have him over Wayne Rooney or Frank Lampard. Certainly Frank Lampard and definitely Steven Gerrard. Do you know what? That's like we comparing people grow, to people grow. Rooney. That's like comparing sickness to diarrhea. Why, why the hell would you choose between those two? Oh, you drop your head to um, But yeah, there's, there's no real choices. So to finish up, we kind of played devil's advocate. I think we're all agreeing that we want Bullet to stay. What is, Matthew, give me like three things that you think the club needs to do to kind of build on what he has done this season already. Back him, I suppose. Give him the funds to go out and purchase the players that... We financially are able to go out and, and, and um, so on. Just on that quickly, let's, let's assume we haven't got a lot of money. When you say back him, do you mean give him, you know, unlimited funds, or do you just chance. mean let? No, him, I think we do. You just mean let him pick the players. Yeah, that let he him wants. pick the players that he thinks is going to push the club forward. I think I'd like us to play more attacking football. I don't think we've done that enough. Um, so bringing that. You know, I think we've mentioned previous in, in different shows about Jordan James and how much he could bring to the football club. Whether or not that's going to be financially viable, I don't know. But, yeah, but the big thing for me is just giving him funds, 
whether that's bringing in loan players, building relationships with other clubs in, in the Premier League and things, I don't know. But yeah, a big thing for me is supporting him, giving him the funds. He's giving him a contract long enough as well that he feels confident to blood the younger players like Joe Colwell and Ashford. So he doesn't think, I've got to win every single game or I'm going to get sacked. Like, let him give him a three year contract and then, like, he can build on it, isn't it yeah. basically. Um, so we're all bullet in then, are we? Um, one name to chuck into you. Okay. Darren Brooks. I said this the other day, mate, when, when I was on the phone in actually, it was when people were saying, like, Aaron Ramsey, assistant manager, uh, still player manager. Darren Burst, by the way. And I said, and I said on, I said on there, I said, listen, I said, people will, like, get their knickers in a twist and they'll get all frustrated and say, oh, what a ridiculous suggestion. And I said, look, I'm going to be open. He's a friend of mine. So, like, I'm going to support what he does and stuff. But even just from, if you're saying to me, or like they were saying to me, Aaron Ramsey is player manager. Well, I'm saying, well, look, I'd rather have Darren Purse, who's actually been managing a team within the Cardiff setup, who was just doing pretty well. You know, he's done well, but he's built a handful of players who are ready to play first team football. And so he can bring them into the first team as well. I would rather see Darren than some of those other names yeah. which have been would mentioned. You have, would you have Darren? And now, I'm not saying he is the right and choice. Aaron working together, perhaps? Yeah, possibly. But he's got to be allowed to pick his own team and like he shouldn't be it shouldn't be offered to him as you can have the manager's job but you've got to have Aaron Ramsey as your player yeah, assistant yeah. manager or coach like if he wants him great but he's got to be able to pick it and that's not me saying necessarily that Darren and I'm sure Darren would say himself he's probably not ready for that type of job at the moment but I'm just saying if you're going to throw sort of silly suggestions that's a more sensible suggestion yeah. in terms of building for the future. Um, but yeah, that's Errol Burrett. That's our opinion. You tell us what you uh, what you think should happen. If he stays, if he goes, who would you replace him with? What would you do to help him build on what he's already done? But uh, most of all, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like it and make sure you join the Flower Hour on a Wednesday and a Saturday. And um, we literally drop bit of Cardiff City content, news, videos, shows, interviews, podcasts, vlogs, something every single day. And make sure you check out the history of Cardiff City with club historian Terry Phillips. Very interesting series. He's really, really interested. Um, appreciate it. Thank you for joining me, Robert, Matthew. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. We are gone.